All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here. Hopefully you watched the last chest workout we did with Brett and Chris. Now we're gonna do an ultra high rep shoulder workout. I'm not making this up, I swear. This is one of the things I did in my 20s. Um, I had a guy that used to work with me, his name was Nick Bowman, and he put me on to these uh, really high rep shoulder exercises. And when I actually did them, it sounded a little weird to me at first, but when I actually did them, it was amazing. My shoulders blew up. So this stuff's gonna seem a little different. The rep schemes are gonna seem different. Now, Chris has done this stuff before because we've worked together for so long, so it's not gonna surprise him, but I think this stuff, you're gonna, you're gonna maybe scratch your head and go, man, that's a little bit odd, but try it. Just trust me, try it, you're gonna like this. It's gonna just blow your shoulders up. So anyways, man, let's get started. That's one of the best things he ever taught me. That and hamstring growth, high reps on shoulders. I, my shoulders used to be terrible. Yeah, so this is a unique style, but um, it works. So those of you who have lagging shoulders, yep. There you go. So the first thing we're gonna do is a partial side lateral. Those of you who followed the channel, you've, you've seen us do these. The, the goal is to get a heavier weight, but you're not coming all the way up with it. You're just working the bottom third of the range of motion. But we're doing high reps, we're doing 30s. So today we're gonna to do three sets of 30. Honestly, I'm taking a little bit easy on you. We, we, there were days we did three sets of 60 on this. But let's do three sets of 30. Now, you're only gonna take a 90 second break. So this is gonna sting. The idea is to really work some heavy weight at the bottom of the range of motion and for high reps. So your shoulders don't really get that. They don't get heavy weight and high reps. So this is a way to do that with a little bit different range of motion. So kick off with three sets of 30, the bottom third of the range of motion, slow controlled form and 90 second breaks. So that's all you have to do to get started. This is exercise number one. Next up, Rear delts and lots and lots of reps. I do not think rear delts are a stubborn body part for most people. Although most people lack rear delts, I think it's just a lack of effort. And a lot of people go, well, I get them for my rows. Everybody, I don't say everybody, most people I put rear delts on, they got it from high reps. Believe it or not, I don't care about the muscle fiber makeup. Don't give me a song and dance about how only rows work your rear delts rear laterals don't they do they work and they work very well so sets of 30 on this now you're going to see chris use textbook form but what i want you guys to remember is once your form starts breaking down just do a partial range of motion just swing so don't you know get ugly with your form just cut down your range of motion it's still going to absolutely smoke your rear delts again we're going to keep the reps up three sets of 30 here and this time we're going to take two minutes between sets okay so three sets of 30. again key point is once you feel your form going do partials now you may overestimate a lot of people overestimate how much weight they should do on these it's actually you're not going to be able to go nearly as heavy because once you get up to that 15 20 rep mark you're going to know exactly what i mean you're going to message me and you go oh my god i had no idea those would burn so bad okay on your last exercise we're actually going to do a combination here we're going to do a press and then we're gonna do a side lateral with a full range of motion. Now, I'm not a big believer in presses. I don't do a lot of presses, but I thought number one, you guys would think this is pretty cool. This is a power squat machine, but these feel great. I'm okay with presses, as long as you have your elbows out in front of you to a degree, and they're not straight out to the side. Like behind the neck press, to me, I've just seen too many shoulders blown out through the years, too many shoulder surgeries. I know how my shoulders feel when I do them. It's just too high risk versus reward to me. It's a lot of risk, very little reward. But again, if you've got your elbows out in front of you a little bit, like on this exercise, I feel like your shoulders are pretty well protected. I've never had an issue personally. Even as old as I am, at 49 years old, I've never had an issue with shoulders on a press like this. So what we're gonna do in our, our high rep theme is we're gonna do 20 overhead presses. And then you're gonna go to the side lateral and you're gonna do 10 reps with a full range of motion. And we're doing three sets here. So basically it's another three by 30. And that's how we're gonna wrap up the day. So burn those babies up. Okay, that wraps it up, but there's something I wanted to mention on this. So in several videos, I've talked about the impracticality of doing high reps all the time. I do feel that that's something I should mention here. So the benefit of higher reps is that you can use less strain on the joints, and you can still get full activation out of your muscle fibers as long as you get close to failure. So 
the amount of force you're applying is what determines the amount of activation. So if you're pressing real fast, you get high activation, although not, not, not necessarily a lot of tension if it's super lightweight. Or a heavy weight requires you to produce a lot of force that require, so that it results in a lot of activation. So we're going a little lighter in weight, but you have to get full activation and exhausting muscle fibers. You have to go close to failure when you use lighter weights. Now, that's very difficult to do day after day after day after day. So we're doing sets of 30 here. And realistically, the sets of 30 should all be close to failure. That's a lot of pain and suffering. It's gonna be tempting to just stop before you're even close to failure because it burns so bad. And that's a challenge of high reps. So what you may wanna do with this type of workout is you may wanna do it every two weeks. Maybe you do it every three weeks. Um, or if you do, if you choose to do, to do it every week, which is what I did, you may wanna only do this for like four weeks straight and then pull back when your reps do something different. So I do wanna mention that from a programming standpoint, the intelligent way to use high reps. It's just not practical to do high reps to failure all the time. I just don't think um, most people's pain tolerance can, can go through with it. And actually central nervous system fatigue, CNS fatigue is actually more of a result of higher reps to failure than it is heavier weight, believe it or not. I think in the industry, we've had that backwards for many years. But now Beardsley, Chris Beardsley and Schoenfeld and all the, the really the great researchers in our field are all pretty much in agreement that this type of training is actually what causes CNS fatigue more so than just the heavy weight. So anyways, just a couple more thoughts to help you with your training and how to program. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and we thank you for all your support and we'll see you next time.